Today's topic is the private side of ancient Chinese life. Unfortunately, this area was often clouded in mystery, legends, and myths, and was not openly discussed. However, we're going to explore some of the most fascinating tales related to this subject and uncover the secrets behind Taoist sexual techniques. So, don't switch channels and keep watching to discover some intriguing insights from ancient China. One of the oldest known books on sex is the Taoist treatise, The Sincere Maiden. Unlike in Western culture, which has been heavily influenced by Christianity and often regarded sex as a sin that required repentance and atonement, ancient Taoist traditions in China had a unique view of physical intimacy. They developed a holistic approach to sexual love that recognized its potential to promote both enlightenment and physical health. The act of uniting man and woman was seen as a natural part of the world, a sacred duty for each individual. In Taoism, there was no division between the body and spirit into the sinful and the divine. Both were considered beautiful. In fact, sex was valued as a means of transforming sexual energy into spiritual energy. According to Taoist doctrine, everything in the world is composed of two complementary and interdependent principles, the dark feminine yin and the light masculine yang. The task of mankind is to harmonize these two forces. Taoist treatises explain that when one knows the art of connecting yin and yang, they can experience all five kinds of pleasures. If this art is not known, life may end prematurely. In Taoism, sexual union was believed to benefit both men and women equally. In contrast to Western civilization, women were not considered to be sinful or impure in Taoism, and their physiology was not attributed with sinful qualities. Instead, Women were seen as the gateway to life itself. Although traditionally given a secondary place after men, this was not viewed as inferior, but rather similar to the way the earth complemented the sky. In Taoism, all Chinese medicine and even martial arts are believed to have originated. The practice recognizes man as the center of vital energy qi, which flows through the meridians in the human body, ensuring balance between yin and yang. Ancient Chinese doctors discovered that the most crucial aspect of health was the harmonious circulation of vital energy. To restore or enhance one's vital energy, one could do so simply by engaging in sexual intercourse, which Taoist knowledge transformed into a science. Thus, ancient China had several treatises dedicated to the art of mating. Intriguingly, one such treatise was reportedly delivered in honor of the legendary emperor Huangdi, a mythical figure regarded as the founder of Taoism and Chinese civilization. In ancient China, many families were polygamous, and a man's number of concubines was limited according to his social position and wealth. While it may be difficult for modern Western women to imagine sharing their husbands with additional wives, researchers found that women in polygamous families lived relatively normal and happy lives, no less content than women in Europe at that time. However, men with multiple wives were not necessarily happier. A harem in ancient China often placed more responsibility on a man than pleasures, not fulfilling the stereotype of a man's paradise. In ancient China, wives and concubines held distinct social statuses and were granted specific rights from the government. The owner of a harem was not only required to provide for and please all of his concubines, but to also attend to their personal needs and desires while maintaining harmonious relationships between them. Failure to do so could result in penalties not only within the family but also in public life, such as the loss of a government official's post or a merchant's reputation. Because it was believed that a house that was not in order would inevitably have money problems as well. In addition to polygamous marriages, ancient China also saw the emergence of an unusual form of marriage called sororate, where a man would marry not only a particular woman but all of her sisters, including cousins. In polygamous families, each woman sought to distinguish herself and attract her husband's attention. In ancient China, beauty was associated with certain customs and aesthetics. Women were expected to maintain calm and collected expressions and graceful movements. To enhance their appearance, women used copious amounts of whitewash, rouge, and lipstick, and shaped their eyebrows according to more than 30 different trends, including butterfly wings and mountain peaks. Hair was also a vital element of beauty and fashion and was carefully arranged and adorned with precious metal combs, pins, and tiaras. Hairstyles bore unique names like the dragon playing with a pearl and the dragon rising from the sea. While it was believed that changing a hairstyle every day and the style once a month was a sign of elegance and sophistication. During China's Song Dynasty, a girl's beauty was largely measured by her figure, and thinness and sophistication were highly prized. In particular, small hands and feet were considered valuable attributes 
with a whole cult built around feet no longer than 10 centimeters. However, achieving this standard of beauty was no easy feat, as girls had to undergo a brutal foot-binding process that lasted three years and resulted in deformed feet. Despite the difficulties, women with bound feet were highly sought after and seen as the epitome of beauty. In fact, only those with such feet were considered eligible for becoming concubines to noble lords, regardless of their family background. Although ancient China was largely patriarchal and Taoist sexual techniques were only accessible to the elite, there was a notable absence of puritanism or prudishness when it came to intimate life. In fact, sexual education was welcomed and the Chinese equivalent of the Kama Sutra was often embroidered on silk and gifted to newlyweds. While polygamy was common in Eastern society, it might be viewed as wild immorality by Western monogamous civilizations. Marco Polo's 13th century journey to China was a crucial moment in the history of geographic discovery and yielded a wealth of ethnographic information. One example from his accounts is the offer of a wife by an inn owner in northern China to keep him company in addition to the bed. To his surprise, Marco Polo found that the woman accepted the proposal with enthusiasm, only later realizing that it was a common custom designed to improve bloodlines in remote areas and attract wealthy travelers, who were typically merchants, to settle with local families. Although Chinese tradition lacked the close relationship between husband and wife that is typical in many other cultures, family life was nevertheless extremely complex. Outside of bed, physical contact between spouses was strictly forbidden, and it was even considered improper to pass something to one's spouse using one's sleeves or to use their cup or plate. The rules of conduct for spouses were outlined in the Confucian Pentateuch's Book of Rituals and included guidelines such as using separate hangers and drawers for clothing, never washing together, and accepting items on a bamboo tray or through a crouching ritual if one was not available. Even when walking down the street, the man was expected to stay on the right side and the woman on the left. These rules applied to the couple until the age of 70. Within the emperor's palace in ancient China, things were far more complex than the average citizen could imagine. As early as the 11th century, the emperor's harem contained over a hundred beauties, and the welfare of the entire nation hinged on the emperor's personal life. Thus, Chinese sages created a system whereby the empress was entitled to a night of love during the full moon, the time believed to be optimal for conceiving in hair. On the second or third day after the full moon, beloved concubines were brought to the emperor's chambers, while on other days, ten concubines would share his bed. Finally, on the new moon, the least favored concubines were selected to be with the emperor. Such unusual traditions and manners were in ancient China, one of the greatest civilizations. If you liked the issue and want to know more interesting things, then subscribe to the channel and stay in touch.